Hey, everybody. My name's uh, Omar Navarro. How's everybody doing? I'm going to let everybody tune in. So I'm going to stand here and wait. <laughs> Hopefully everybody's doing good. Where's everybody from? Wait for you guys to tune in first. So you guys can uh, watch. Good. How's everybody on YouTube, Facebook? How's everybody? Hey. How's everybody doing? Where's everybody from? <laughs> Been working hard this week. Got a lot going on. Especially with uh, all this stuff that's been going on with the, with COVID, a lot of people being locked in. I, I don't know how is it for everyone, but for me, it's been it's been tough because everywhere you go here, especially in Los Angeles, it's pretty bad. It's it's not that great. I mean, it's it's crazy here. I mean, I went to DMV to go to make a line, and that was pretty bad. I mean, can you imagine everybody going to DMVs and making a line for that? Even go to restaurants, you have to make these lines. And you see all these people going to grocery stores. You have to make a line outside. And there's like 100 people in the line. And you're like, seriously, do I have to wait that long? That's why everybody's just buying fast food and everybody's getting the COVID diet. Everybody's getting fat. So it's easy to gain weight. I just gained like 10 pounds. I, I need to like seriously start going to the gym again. <laughs> This is pretty bad. Hey, Debbie, how you doing, Debbie? Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Jenny, too. All right, everyone, I'm going to go into some stuff. Uh, I want to talk about what's recently going on uh, out there. Uh, in Chicago, uh, there was recently, uh, yesterday, basically, this just happened in the morning. Uh, in Chicago, there was about 100 people that got injured. Uh, there was about 100 people, I'm sorry, there was about a hundred people that were arrested in Chicago yesterday. Uh, there was two people that were uh, shot and there was about three police officers that were uh, 13 police officers that were injured uh, in, in this whole thing. Um, that's a big concern. 13 police officers get injured. Uh, you have over uh, two people that get shot and then you have a hundred arrests that happen in Chicago. I mean, this is what's going on in these uh, liberal cities. Uh, a lot of lawlessness no respect for the law. Uh, exactly what is going on here in LA. Uh, it's no different than Chicago. There's a lot of corruption with these Democrats. All these Democrats want to do is shove down their agenda, down your throat. And if you don't want to believe in that as a conservative, because I am a conservative and I am a Christian, I do not want to submit to their ideology. And I won't do that. Uh, this is completely a, w a communist way of thinking. This is what they want to do. They want to shove this agenda down your throat. Look, my family came from a different country. They came from a communist country like Cuba. And so I understand a great deal what it is to have liberty and liberty being stripped away from you. We don't want this ideology to turn into the, another Venezuela, another Cuba here in the United States. So we have to fight these this type of ideology every step of the way how do we do this well we do this by being involved in our communities by participating making sure that we're going and getting involved in it when it, in regards to like city council school board because it starts there it starts there in the in the in the bare minimum you have to get involved in these communities because if you don't you have people shoving ideology down your kid's throat you have people that shove the ideology on a local level. So you have to do whatever you can to get involved on a grassroots, especially with your districts when it comes to state assembly races. And this is in other states. Uh, this is in also in the state of California. It's so important that you participate because if you don't get involved, this is what happens. The lawlessness, the looting, the stealing, 13 police officers get injured. Uh, 13 arrests occur throughout the process. And I, I, I guarantee you that those people that were arrested, 100 of them, are probably going to be let out. And that's the truth of the matter, because you have people like the, like the governor of California. You have people like Eric Garcetti, the mayor of Los Angeles, that are roaming and leading, and they're letting people out. They're just not going to 
keep people in there. Uh, there are people who get wrongfully accused of things, and that does occur through the legal process. I've been through that myself. But there are people who get who actually do something, and they should be paying for it. And this is exactly what happened. I'm like, this is not freedom of speech. When when lawlessness gets when it turns something turns into lawlessness and criminal behavior, it's no longer freedom of speech. It's now an utter rule of dictatorship. It's a communist way of thinking. So we have to fight this, this mentality. If we don't fight this mentality, we continue to get leaders like Hillary Clinton. I don't, I don't think Hillary Clinton is much of a leader, but they call them leaders. So these so-called leaders in these communities have utter control and they have utter say and people do listen to them. As much as you, you don't want to listen to them yourself, but people do listen to them and they take them very seriously. So we, the people, and when I say we, the people, I mean people that respect our constitution, respect our country, our laws. We, the people, must take a stand against this way of thinking. We have to go back to the foundation of what our country was about. And we have to take a stand and get involved. Getting involved is the essential, most important part right now in this election that's going on in November. We are either going to choose a socialist like Joe Biden, because that's where he's going. He's caving to socialist ideology of AOC, Maxine Waters. Nancy Pelosi's even headed there herself. She's caving to this new ideology that's completely taken over the country. What are we going to do about it rather than talk about it? You see, I'm delivering this message because I've been involved since I was at the age of 18. I've been involved in politics for over 13 years. I participated in elections. I've walked for candidates. I've gone door to door for them. I participated on a level of participating inside the campaign on the grassroots level. I've done my big part in being involved because I cared since I, when I registered, when I was 18 to vote, not only did I participate, not only did I register to vote, I also participated. So part of our process is to do whatever we can to make sure that the communists don't take over our country. Now the socialists have been taking over, like Bernie Sanders, like AOC, like Ian Omar, Rashida Tlaib, all these people, the little squad have been getting in there. And if we don't stop them, if we don't put an end to them, our freedoms, our republic is going to be no more. So we have to stand up and fight this ideology. And if we don't fight it, you can kiss freedom goodbye. I want to cover this other subject that I'm going through right now. Um, they're recently uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, there's a man by the name of Jimmy. Um, you can see the article. Uh, Jimmy basically was taken and arrested. He's a media guy, big media tycoon over there in China. Uh, and this guy's a pretty credible person, I, I would say. You know, he's involved in the media and everything. I don't know too much about Jimmy, but what I do know, he's involved in the media and he was taken in custody by the Chinese government. Well, what does that got to do with anything? That's what people are going to ask. Well, what does this guy in China get arrested? What does that have to do with anything? It has a lot to do with everything. Because, look, we don't need the Twitter police to go in and keep t arresting people for the freedom of speech. This is what can, exactly what can happen in our country. And what they accuse this man of is colluding, basically, with foreign government. Uh, this is exactly what happened to the president of the United States. They accuse him of collaborating with Russia. And they come up with all these hoax of all these things and saying that he's colluding with foreign governments. This is exactly what goes on in com communist societies. So if the communists are, have been doing this throughout history, accusing people of collusion, this is exactly the Democrats' playbook. They are following the communist manifesto. They are not going against that. They are completely in bed with it. So what's not to say that in our country, as soon as you start speaking out your mind, Sooner or later, we're going to have the police knocking at your door for what you said on social media. Oh, yes, this does happen. The Internet, when it first started, it was intended 
for people to be able to have uh, discourse online in a healthy manner or unhealthy manner, whatever that might be. It was, it was the wild, wild west. And now it's been censored. Now the Twitter police have gone in there. The Facebook police have gone on there. Social media in general, overall, the internet's over-policed. If you say anything, you could be arrested for it. You could, they could find out who you are. Are we headed in that direction? I see it going in that direction if we don't stop this. That's why we have to create laws and policies in our government to make sure that we are stopping this. We have to pass legislation when it comes to internet policing because that's, that's one of the things that's going on. How can we control the level of what people do or say on the internet? That, that's what it goes into. It's like people were like, well, we got to stop this. We got to stop that. Yes, there are things we have to stop. But the, the words and infringement on free speech, uh, that, that's one of the things right there where, where it, could, it could go either way. You have people, crazy people like Alex Jones. Uh, you have, uh, same, you know, have crazy people like Maxine Waters. You have crazy people like Nancy Pelosi, AOC. Uh, you have crazies on either side. But do they have the right to speak is the question. Yes, they do. They should have the right to speak, to speak their mind. And if they can't speak their mind, then what are we? Are we a country? Because I don't see it as a country. I don't see it as the country that was started by our founding fathers, that protected us, that did everything at every cost to fight for freedom. What are we going to do to protect that? Because right now we're living in a country where they're using the coronavirus as a means to take our freedoms away. They're using the coronavirus as a means to push policy that can control us, that can tell us, they can tell us virtually anything to do because we are giving up our liberty for safety. Our founding fathers have fought against the leftist ideology of not giving up our freedoms for our safety to choose our freedom before safety. I will die any day for my freedom than for half safety. And that's what they're using. They're using this tactic to take away your freedom. The freedom to speak when it comes down to Twitter. Again, what I'm saying with Twitter in regards to Twitter going in and censoring you and policing you and going in there and they're talking about how your information because of certain pill that could prevent that could prevent the coronavirus. So hydroxy is a preventative measure and it could be essentially the cure for some people to stop the coronavirus. But yet the Twitter police will go in and take down your post or tell you if you don't take down your post, they will have you blocked from Twitter. So this is what happens in foreign countries where they take you in by the police or they just completely just lock you up and keep you from talking. Can this happen here in the United States? Of course it can. It can happen here. And a lot of people would say, well, it's like, well, that's outrageous. Well, it's true because it's happening in other places. And if that ideology comes here into this country, and you know why that ideology comes here into this country? Because we're not protecting our border. We are not protecting our border. We are allowing illegals to continue to come into this country illegally. And if we continue to have people who come here in this country illegally, they come in with a different type of ideology. And when they come in with a different type of ideology, guess what, everyone? It's not the American ideology. It's a third world ideology. It's an ideology that has put many countries back that's why America has been a success story. That's why many people, wealthy people, have come out of this country because of our, of, of, of our ideology. The way that we do things in our country is different than everyone else. And that's what makes us special. But we aren't special if we allow people to come in with a different ideology and try to change the way that we think and do things. I'll give you an example. I've had family that's come from Mexico. In Mexico, you have cartels that run, the, that run the show, that bribe the politicians, 
And then the politicians get cuts from the business owners. And at the same time, they also have to pay to be protected by the cartels. That's how it works in Mexico. Again, do you want a society that's going to be controlled by the cartels, by the politicians? Or do you want a society where you, the people, are going to have control of your life, your destiny, your future? That's what I'm telling everyone is right now. If we want to have our future set in stone, we have to fight for our freedom. And that means even being involved at a young age, like I was at the age of 18. I just didn't sit down and said, I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to be active. I registered to vote and I registered to vote Republican. And I stuck to the Republican Party for the past 13 years. I have never switched and I've never switched because I believe that the Republican Party stands for freedom. It stands for individual liberties. It stands for the, for the right to be able to accomplish anything and for the government not to take anything from me, the individual who worked hard for it. But you have another ideology on the left that believes in more government, that believes in overtaxing you, that believes that you shouldn't have all the freedoms you should have. They believe that the politicians should have more power, more control of your daily life. Well, I don't believe that. I'm against that. But the left will tell me because I'm Hispanic that I'm racist if I don't agree with them. That I'm not Hispanic enough. Like Joe Biden told blacks, if they didn't vote for him, they're not black. Well, Joe Biden, am I not Hispanic enough if I don't vote for you? No, I am Hispanic, but this Hispanic does not agree with your ideology. I agree with the Republican values. I disagree with everything what the Democrats stand for. They are against everything I believe. And I will fight for this ideology because I believe in it. I believe in standing up to it. I, I believe in fighting for the people that believe in the same ideology as I do. And I believe in common sense. It's not common sense to be a Democrat. It's not common sense to want more government, more intrusion, more control. I want less control. I want more individual liberties. That's the way to do it. So how are we going to get back to that perspective is by being more involved. Like I stated earlier, I want to talk about activism in a big way because activism is so important. It's important to me, it should be important to you. It should be important to your children. We need to instill that once again. We need to bring that back because right now you have the left that is weaponizing these young kids and they're using them as political pawns to commit atrocities of what happened in Chicago. Do you want this? Do you want your children that you raised to just go out there and be cheering and, and looting and stealing and, and doing all these atrocities. What happened to parents? Where are the parents? Because oh, oh, there's some parenting that happens, but where are the real parents? Because if your children have turned out to like erratic leftists, have you really raised them right? Have we really taught them values? That is the question you have to ask yourself because people find their way and some people just want to rebel and they want to disagree with you just because you believe in that, in that, in that ideology. But at the end of the day, there's common sense and common sense doesn't mean voting for the left. Common sense means you vote Republican and not everything that Republicans do. I agree with. There's stuff that I disagree with my own party, but what I do know at the end of the day is that we are the party of freedom. We are the party of Lincoln that freed the slaves. And people have forgotten that. Why have people forgotten the Republican party freed the slaves? It was the Democrats that were, in the, that were the founders of the Ku Klux Klan. They were the ones that were taking people's individual liberties away. 
But all of a sudden now, they're seen as heroes. Not by me, not by many of you, but by other people. They've been brainwashed and they are seen as heroes. What are we going to do to go out there and change that? Because we got to stand up and say enough is enough. I've had it. I hope you have. Um, one of the things I want to cover right now, uh, I'm gonna, I want to go over with you guys, is Kaepernick. Uh, Colin Kaepernick and the JFK Award. Um, Colin Kaepernick just got an award. The JFK Award? Are they serious? And guess what? On top of that, Fauci also gets the award. I, I could understand Fauci a little bit, just a little bit more of getting that award. But at the end of the day, the two most unlikely people that I would ever think of getting the, the JFK award is Colin Kaepernick and Fauci. They are the last people that I would think would be getting that award. And honestly, they should both be getting fired. I, I mean, one's, one's going out there, not really doing his job. And then the other one, uh, he, he, he takes a stand on the flag. He takes a knee. He takes a knee, and now everyone is trying to follow suit in sports because they all see it as a political motive to up their careers in Hollywood, in the sports industry. They all see it as a reason of getting a new following, of getting more people to give them more endorsements, more backing. That's what's going on right now in Hollywood, in the sports industry. You have all these people that are doing this for political gain, and the political gain turns into monetary gain. That's why they do it. That's why they're doing this. That's why, look, the JFK Award, I, the JFK Award is supposed to go to someone who's doing something great for our country. But look, it's going to Colin Kaepernick. I say no more. Colin Kaepernick, out of all the people. I mean, I'm wondering what you guys think about it. I'm like, I'm looking through the comments and everything. I, I'm utterly disgusted. I'm utterly disgusted to see exactly that people in our country would award these two losers with the JFK award. I, I, I want to see what some of the comments are saying. Well, Fauci is definitely a fraud. I mean, Fauci, look, again, let's go into this. Fauci is not even having briefings with the president. He's not meeting with him on a regular day, on a regular day-to-day -day basis. He's not meeting with the president. He's actually going on TV. He's saying all these other things that are obviously not true. He's, he wants to force people to believe a certain ideology. Fauci is trying to spread this message that you know, like hydroxy is a preventative measure and it is a cure to some people that take it. But then you have people like Fauci that continue to ignore this and don't say anything about it. How, why is Fauci not taking a stand? Why is Fauci continue just to sit there and do nothing? That's what I ask everyone here. It's time, maybe it's time we fire Fauci and replace him, maybe with that doctor uh, with the accent. I, I, I like her a lot better. At least she, she, wants, she wants God in people's heart. And, and she, actually, she actually knows that hydroxy is actually a cure to this disaster of the coronavirus. Because this coronavirus has definitely changed everyone's life. I don't know how you feel, but I sure don't like wearing that mask when I go to a store. When I have to make a hundred, I have to make a line in Los Angeles to go to a Ralph's, to go to a Costco, to go to any, and I like cooking and I, I like cooking, but I can't do that because I have to make a line. And now I have to go to a restaurant. I have to go eat fast food because there's a line now, a big line to go in these stores. It, it takes hours of your time. And if you have a life, and you're a hardworking individual, you don't have time to sit there for an hour to make a line and go in and store. You're just not going to do that. And you're going to end up spending more money to eat outside. You're going to spend, and then by the way, when you spend more money, look at the taxes. The taxes have gone up through the roof. 
especially here in California, we're paying almost 11% sales tax. I mean, that for me, that is the huge concern because when you're paying almost 11% sales tax in your own community, in your own city, that right there is the real problem. Over taxation, didn't we get away from another country for over taxation? And now we're on our own country and we're being overtaxed, especially during a pandemic. And there are people who have lost their jobs. There are people who are forced to live a certain way now because of all these people that are making all the rules, all these politicians who are not even qualified, honestly, to be making any decisions. And you have a doctor like Fauci, who's not acting like a doctor, who's not acting like a man with logic. People have to work. Not everyone has to wear that mask. Not everyone has pre-existing conditions. Not everyone's old. Should I be forced to be treated as if someone had a pre-existing condition, someone that was older? If I want to catch the virus, and, and which I've had friends that have caught this virus, and they have recovered quickly, swiftly, and nothing happened to them. And I also had friends that have passed away that are older, and, and I love them to death. But again, th there's a general consensus what, what we should give people the right to choose it, whether they want to stay home not force people to live a certain way, to change the way they're living. So I believe if you're young, I, 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 don't, I don't think that you should be forced, but if you have a pre-existing condition and you're older, you should maybe take the safe route, stay home. Uh, and if your kids care about you, they should also be considerate of you and take the high road and, and understand maybe I got also protect myself, but that should be up to you, the individual, not the government. The government should be mandating people and controlling what people do. That's why that's what the Democrats believe. The Democrats believe taking your freedom away, your individual liberty. I believe in empowering you. Now, right now, I'm going to go cover uh, a video that I just recently did uh, in front of uh, Eric Garcetti's home. I want to show you uh, the video. It's four minutes. Take a look at it. It's great. We are going to uh, Eric Garcetti's house. This is Irving Boulevard, 600 South. We're going across the street. We're not doxing Eric Garcetti, obviously, because this is public record. His home is listed publicly. This is his home right here. Uh, his big, nice home, giant mansion. I mean, this is a nice gated mansion that Eric Garcetti lives in, but yet he doesn't want public safety but you could clearly see inside his house that he has these giant SUVs in his house that tells me that he has like a secret service style, like he has protection, he has security, but yet he's against protecting our communities by defunding the police, which is not a good solution. I believe that it should be police reform, not defunding the police. So this guy right here in itself is contradictory to what he believes in, and he himself is not living that way. And again, Eric Garcetti seems to be agreeing with the walls when it comes to his own home, but when it comes to our own country, he's against the big wall. I mean, look, look this is really nice. It's all, all backed up and closed up and everything. To go to his home, I have to get buzzed in and I would have to let, let them let me enter. Look at all, all these cars they have here, the security protection they have. I mean, like they have even cameras in their house. But when it comes to our border, they're against the wall. They're against security. They're against cameras. All of a sudden it becomes an issue, but when it comes to their lifestyle and the way they live, oh no, oh no, I wanna to continue to live this way. So what Eric Garcetti's trying to do, he's trying to uh, shut down the water and utilities, uh, people's homes in Los Angeles that are trying to throw parties and host parties and events. And he's saying that they're throwing parties and they're not protecting themselves because of the coronavirus. So they're using the coronavirus as a measure to control property rights in Los Angeles which hand in hand is communist. If people own their homes, they should have every right to throw parties. They should have every right to host any event they want to host. These are called property rights. What does Eric Garcetti know about his community living in this giant mansion? Again, look at this wall. 
He says he gets against the wall, but yet there's a giant wall on his home. He says he's against uh, police, but yet he has protection and detail of security in his own home even. This man seems to uh, say he's for the poor, but yet he has like 20 different cars right in front of his giant mansion. It's very hypocritical. These politicians, they preach, they talk, they say whatever they want, but yet people forget that he was the son of Gil Garcetti, who was the former district attorney of Los Angeles. And Gil Garcetti was the lead DA in OJ's case. So look at that. That's called political corruption at its finest. He's the son of a former district attorney of Los Angeles who became a city councilman who became mayor of LA. But yet he's out of touch with the constituency and the community because he lives in a giant mansion while the rest of the people are living in dirt and living in trash and homelessness and yet he wants to control the people that own homes and their property rights and what they do with their own homes. They take all this money that they allocate and they say that, oh, they're going to fix the streets, sidewalks, they're going to dress the homeless, they're going to do all this, but they really don't do that. They take the money and they divert it to the pensions and their obligations that they currently have because if they don't, the state's going to fall into a bankruptcy. That's, what, that's the biggest untold lie that's happening here in California, that a bankruptcy can happen in the state of California if they don't fulfill their obligations. That's why they passed quarter cent sales tax in Los Angeles, like Eric Garcetti, and they increase our taxes. We're almost paying almost 11% in sales tax in Los Angeles alone right now. Does Eric Garcetti care about that? No, he doesn't care because he lives in his gated mansion that's right behind me right now with all his cars and his security and his wall. I'm telling you, these people... Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching that video. Uh, basically, I, I went to Eric Garcetti's home to prove a point. Prove a point that, look, that's a known Democrat. He's the mayor of Los Angeles. Look at the way he's living. Look at the way that he has protection in his own home. He has a big gate. He has a, a big wall. He has a security system. He can record everything. He has security detail. Does Eric Garcetti living with the people in Los Angeles, does he know what the people of Los Angeles are really going through? The answer is no, he doesn't know what they're going through. But yet he makes these lavish threats to shut down their utilities if they don't do whatever he wants regarding the coronavirus. Again, we have property rights. Not only do we have property rights, we have constitutional rights. Eric Garcetti, along with the governor of California, are subjecting themselves to lawsuits. Because this is exactly what's going to happen. We need to stop this. And if we don't stop this, this is going to continue to be pushed down our throats. So I'm asking you guys to keep joining my, 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 join me on YouTube, join me on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys like my page. Uh, make sure you guys donate like uh, Yay, uh, Yay Rain, who just donated. I really appreciate it uh, for that donation. Thank you for doing that. Um, it keeps us going. I'm able to do this. I'm able to talk about these issues. I'm able to go out there like in front of Eric Garcetti's home and able to expose these politicians. Because if you guys allow me to do this, I'm able to go out there. I'm able to fight. I'm able to do this. Those of you, some of you might not be able to fight the fight. Might not, some of you are busy with your lives, but you guys can enable someone like me to fight for you. I can fight for you, but you have to empower me. Uh, if you guys can donate uh, to my GoFundMe page, the link's below. You guys can make a donation to it, whatever you guys can donate. I would appreciate that. Uh, if you guys can share it with other people that can donate, if you can't donate, I would appreciate that too. I want to thank you guys for tuning in, for watching Omar Navarro Unfiltered. Uh, please share this uh, channel, share this video, and get it out there. God bless you guys. Thank you.